My name is Rigger. Not my real name, obviously. A nickname from back when I was fixing engines on rust bucket trade ships. But you can call me that. I run solo now, digging for salvage in the Titan's heart. Titan's heart. That's what they call this chunk of dwarf planet. Barely a third of the original left. Mind hollow like a rotten tooth. It was a strategic resource point during the war, but some jackass with a fusion warhead cracked it wide open. Now it floats aimlessly, just another rock, one of thousands, unless you know what to look for. The salvage rights are owned by some bloated corporation, can't even recall which. They run the big sterile haulers out here, but those jockeys don't risk their powdered necks in the deep tunnels. That's where the independents like me come in. We work the seams, the unstable zones where radiation makes your blood hum. Every dive's a gamble. There's always something out there in the dark. Today's my lucky day. The Geiger counter is screaming like a banshee. This vein is hot. I'm crawling on my belly, spacesuit scraping on the ragged rock, headlamp cutting a narrow path through the dust cloud I kicked up. I reach the end of the tunnel. Just a dead end, a crumbling wall. But the counter says otherwise. There's a cache in here, something good. I activate the laser cutter. Its shriek pierces the empty passage. Sparks fly and the smell of ozone burns my throat. The first cut makes the whole wall shimmer and groan. Rocks shift and drop with dull thuds. That's when I hear it. Not a groan, not mechanical, it's... Wet. A scraping, dragging sound. My blood runs cold. All those stories about the muties, the ones they say live in the radiation zones, the ones they say aren't human anymore. Those stories are meant to scare greenhorns. Everyone knows they're just superstition. But alone, this far down, my hand clamps hard on the cutter's trigger. It's just my imagination, right? Just the damned tunnel playing tricks on me. Then, movement in the darkness beyond the reach of my headlamp. Something pale. Just a glimpse. Then another. Claws. Each skittering sound sends a shiver down my spine. The counter is getting louder. The cache. It's got to be close. I raise the laser cutter and force myself forward. The cut reveals a narrow crevice in the wall. I squeeze my armoured bulk into the crack, heart pounding. That's when I see it. Two glowing eyes low to the ground staring right at me. My lungs fight for air, but the suit recycler kicks in with an angry wheeze. It's a relief that drowns the fear for a moment, but those eyes, they burn through me, inhuman, filled with cold intelligence. The creature isn't huge, maybe the size of a big dog, but its body is all angles and twisted limbs. Skin sags loosely, translucent, revealing shifting black patches beneath. Tumors, mutated flesh. The thing hisses, a dry, rattling sound. It lowers its head, bearing needle-sharp teeth. I scramble back, trying to wedge the laser cutter between us. I'll fry the damn thing before it tears me apart. My boot catches on a loose rock. I lose my footing and slam hard against the tunnel wall, the cutter jarring loose from my grip. It lands with a metallic thud, rolling away into the darkness. The creature twitches, as if startled by the noise. It doesn't lunge for me. Instead, it slithers away, back into the crevice where it emerged. But those eyes never leave mine. It's toying with me, I realize. Testing me. The hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. The Geiger counter is screaming now, its insistent beeping mingling with my frantic breaths. The cache is right there, within arm's reach. It could be a rare power cell, a stash of black market meds, the kind of find that sets you up for life. This is what I risk my life for. But the creature could be back in an instant, that feeling, like the rock itself was watching me, waiting. I don't know what those muties are capable of. Are the stories true? Do they work together? Do they hunt in packs? My survival instincts scream at me, get out of there, I should turn and run, leave the damn treasure. This rock isn't worth my life, the smart choice, the safe choice. I clench my jaw. When did I start listening to that voice? 
To hell with the smart choice, I mutter under my breath. I lunge forward, grabbing for the metal box glinting in the gloom. It's small, heavy. No time to check its contents, just shove it in my pack and disappear. The second my hand touches the box, the tunnel explodes in sound, screeching, a chorus of it. The walls seem to vibrate with the onslaught. I can see shapes now, darting out of holes and crevices I never even noticed. Dozens of eyes, glowing pinpricks in the darkness. There's no point in fighting. I snatch up the laser cutter, kick off the wall, and scramble back down the tunnel the way I came. The air tastes like copper, choked with fear and the acrid burn of recirculated oxygen. The Geiger counter is a steady shriek, an alarm I can't silence. I can hear them behind me, the chittering chorus gaining ground. The only way out is the way I came in. But what if they've blocked my exit? What if they're waiting? My headlamp cuts through the dust, searching for light ahead. If I don't find that opening, then it appears, the mouth of the tunnel. I burst out into the cold vacuum of space, the starry expanse making me dizzy. The only sound now is my own ragged breathing. I seal my suit and grapple toward my ship, a tiny speck tethered to the jagged face of the asteroid. But something's wrong. It hangs there, dead. Not just powered down, no lights, no radio response, just inert metal. That's when it hits me. They got to it, the muties. They're not just mindless animals. They cut me off. They planned this. Panic hits harder than the radiation ever could. I'm adrift. They'll be coming for me any minute. I've got no backup, no distress beacon, just the battered mining suit I'm wearing and whatever supplies are left in my tanks. This rock. I underestimated it. It's their territory, not mine. My only chance is to reach the comm outpost before my suit gives out. It's a half-day crawl, exposed across the pitted surface of the asteroid under the harsh glare of the distant sun. If I survive the radiation, the vacuum, or the muties tracking my trail, hell, at this point, if an errant meteor takes me out, I'd almost consider it mercy. There's no point dwelling on it. Time to move. Every breath is precious. Each clumsy step pushing the limits of my suit's life support. The comms outpost appears on the horizon. A skeletal tower. Its dish pointed uselessly at the emptiness. The asteroid surface is a brutal landscape. Jagged craters. Mountains of broken rock. With every agonizing step, the Geiger counter wails louder, and I swear the shadows shift with subtle movement. It feels like the whole world is holding its breath, watching, waiting for me to collapse. They've got me playing their game now. Midway there, my worst fear comes to life. A figure appears on a ridge, silhouetted against the stars. It's one of them, bigger, stronger looking than the rest. It tilts its head, the glowing eyes piercing even at this distance. Somehow I know that it's the leader. I freeze. They've cut me off. There's nowhere to hide, no way to outrun it. All I can do is stand my ground, raise the laser cutter in a futile gesture of defiance. It almost makes me laugh. Me, Rigger, the guy they used to call fearless, reduced to this. But the creature doesn't charge. It stays perfectly still on the ridge, simply watching me. It's almost curious. My heart thumps wildly. Is it testing me again, waiting to see what I'll do? Then it turns and walks away, a shadow disappearing back into shadow. A reprieve? Or another part of the game? The uncertainty eats at me, but I push on. I have to. The outpost is closer now, tantalizingly near. But with each step, the realization sinks in. Even if I reach it, what then? The corporation won't send help. They'll write this off as an accident. Another independent contractor lost in the belt. I'm truly alone. By the time I reach the tower, my air is running dangerously low. My legs tremble with exhaustion. The skin beneath my suit feels raw, burned by radiation. I scramble up the tower's skeletal frame, reaching for the control panel of the ancient comm system. This is my last, desperate gamble. 
My fingers dance over rusted buttons and dials that feel foreign beneath my thick gloves. There's just enough power to send a single, weak distress call. I close my eyes and let the words tumble out, raw and unfiltered. This isn't the usual professional chatter of a rigger. It's a broken plea, a confession to the empty void. This is rigger, Sector 8311, Titan's Heart. I don't know who's picking this up. I messed up. They're not animals. They're smart. Calculating. They're hunting me. Help. Anyone. The signal cuts off, leaving only silence. There's nothing left to do but sit here and wait for my air to fail, or for the muties to come for me. Either way, the end is the same. Funny, I always figured I'd go out in a blaze of glory, not whimpering on some godforsaken rock. But I never was cut out to be a hero. Just another guy trying to make a buck out in the darkness. And now, I guess the darkness is finally cashing in. Hours crawl by. Each shallow breath is a battle won. I've switched to emergency reserves, the taste of recycled oxygen bitter on my tongue. The suit creaks with tension. Every blink of a warning light, a countdown to death. Then, it comes. Not a screeching horde of mutants, but a shift on the horizon. A ship, its silhouette cutting through the starlight. Small, fast, definitely not corporate. An independent like me. Hope surges through me, bitter and desperate. They picked up my beacon. But why would they risk coming here? Could be any kind of scavenger, pirate, bounty hunter, people as bad as the damn muties themselves. At this point, I'll take my chances. I watch the ship descend, its thrusters lighting up the barren surface in an eerie blue glow. It's a sleek thing, a one-man fighter. The hatch opens and a figure climbs out, a woman armoured head to toe. She carries a rifle and walks with the fluid confidence of someone who doesn't spook easily. She approaches, helmet visor still closed, making it impossible to read her expression. Rigor. Her voice is crisp, clipped with authority. What's left of him? I reply, managing a weak laugh that crackles through the comms. And who the hell are you? Name's Astra, she says, lowering her rifle slightly. Got your distress call. Let's just say I'm interested in things that go bump in the dark. There's no point in posturing now. Listen, I don't have anything to offer you. No money, no salvage, just trouble. Astra takes a few steps closer. Now I can see the scratches marring her armor, the glint in her eyes beneath the visor. Trouble? She tilts her head, as if hearing music in the word. Trouble's my business. A tremor of relief runs through me. Maybe I'm not done for yet. I tell her everything. The cash, the mutants, the way they cut me off. I hold nothing back. Desperation makes for strange honesty. When I finish, she stays silent for a long moment. They're evolving, she finally says, her voice thoughtful. Damn it, things like this are why I'm out here. The corporations, they don't want anyone to know. Know what? I ask, the pieces finally starting to click. Astra hesitates, then raises a hand to her helmet. The visor slides open, revealing a scarred face, dark eyes burning with an intensity that rivals the mutants. Know that this isn't some random asteroid belt anymore, she says. It's the front line of a war we didn't even know we were fighting. The words hit home. It's not just about survival anymore. There's something bigger happening. Something far more dangerous than the corporate cutthroats in the belt. And whether I like it or not, I'm tangled in the middle of it. Well then, I say, managing to grin despite the dire straits. Seems like you and me, Astra. We've got some work to do. A rush of unexpected relief washes over me. The grim acceptance of my solitary death melts away, replaced by something almost like excitement. If there's a war, I'll be damned if I'll go out without a fight. First things first, Astra says, already all business. We need to get the hell off this rock. She strides back towards her ship. I lumber gracelessly after her, the asteroid's low gravity making mockery of my exhausted body. As I reach the hatch, she turns. Suits on its last legs? About five minutes of breathing room, I grunt, patting the depressingly flashing gauge. Hold on, 
she vanishes back into the ship, returning with a battered but functional-looking spare suit. Loner, you'll have to share my air supply. Tether system in the back. Without hesitation, I start stripping off the ruined suit. Every exposed inch of flesh screams in protest at the biting chill of space. But it's a quick trade. I wiggle into the unfamiliar suit, clumsily attaching the air tether to the port on my back. Astra's voice crackles through my helmet speakers as I seal it up. Airs on. Comset, you good? Never better, I say with more conviction than I feel. The shared air will stretch my time, but it's still a race against the clock. As the hatch seals behind me, the claustrophobic interior of Astra's ship feels oddly comforting after the vast emptiness outside. She's already at the controls, the ship powering up with a low, reassuring hum. The displays surge to life. A star map splashed across the cracked screen. I recognize familiar routes, trade lanes, established mining zones. It's a normal map of the belt. But when Astra flips a switch, the familiar points of light vanish, replaced by a completely different pattern. Now there's the real map, she explains, her voice tight, the one they don't want you to see. The new star chart is littered with blinking red marks. Not trade routes, not navigational markers, but clusters, territories, some small, isolated blips, others, vast, sprawling red zones bleeding across sectors. My stomach sinks. Sectors they've taken, Astra says as if reading my mind. They're organized, spreading, whole areas cut off, comms blackouts, ships that go in don't come out. It's why none of the powers that be are making a fuss. Easier to explain away a few lost ships and a radiation spike than admit what's really happening. And what's really happening? I ask, the fear clawing at my throat now. We're talking invasion? Alien forces? She shakes her head. Maybe, but I think this is homegrown. The war, the bombs, they changed things faster than anyone knew. It's almost too much to process. I remember the history lessons, the grainy footage of the war, the earth laid waste, the colonies struggling to survive. It all seemed so distant back then, another cautionary tale. But now it feels starkly real. The consequences playing out right in front of me. So, why come here? I ask, gesturing to the blinking red zones. Why get involved? She shrugs, a bitter twist to her lips. Someone needs to. The corporations just want to bury their heads. Someone has to see what we're up against, disrupt their plans, slow the spread if we can. Maybe even find a way to fight them. Astra starts flipping switches, pre-flight checks moving at a dizzying pace. But first, she throws a mischievous grin over her shoulder. We have to show those muties they picked the wrong miner to mess with. A wild laugh rumbles through my borrowed suit. Astra's got a spark that reminds me of my own reckless youth, facing down the unknown not with trembling hands, but with something akin to glee. So, where to? I ask, a tremor of anticipation running through me. Got a little surprise in mind, Astra replies, a predatory grin spreading across her face. We're going straight back to the Titan's heart. Let's say hello to your new friends. Her plan hits me like an asteroid strike. Bold, audacious, and just crazy enough to work. The muties are underestimating us, assuming we'd cower and run. Well, we're hitting back, right where they least expect it. Our approach is anything but subtle. Astra's ship, a sleek, nimble corvette, streaks towards the ruined asteroid, weapons primed and shields humming. The sensors pick up the increased activity around my original mining site, a swarm of muted heat signatures converging as if they sense the threat. Incoming! I shout. Dozens of mutated creatures spill from the rock face, scuttling across the uneven terrain, their pale forms like maggots against the inky blackness. Don't like surprises, do they? Astra's voice crackles with static, barely masking the fierce joy in her tone. The corvette dives, strafing a group of them with a volley of laser fire. 
Shrieking fills the comms as the blast vaporizes a cluster of the creatures, sending charred limbs flying amidst a chorus of enraged hisses. They're learning fast, I observe through gritted teeth. They're already scattering for cover, adapting to our tactics with unsettling speed. Astra weaves her ship expertly, drawing their attention while I ready the ship's aft cannon. On her signal, I unleash a burst of energy that blasts a crater in the asteroid's crust exposing another hidden nest. The battle rages. We're hopelessly outnumbered, but Astra's piloting is masterful. The corvette dancing through the barrage of clawing limbs and projectile barbs the creatures fling at us. The ship shudders as some of the barbs find their mark, but our shields hold. For now. Keep your eyes peeled, Astra shouts over the din. There's something big down there, I can feel it. She's right. My Geiger counter is spiking and the readings are different. Less erratic. More concentrated. I follow the signal, scanning the ravaged rock face until my eyes lock onto an unnatural crevice, wide and dark. The source. Bingo, I bark. Nest entrance, looks like. Perfect. Prep the payload, Astra says, a wicked edge to her voice. Let's give them a housewarming gift. I reach into the cargo bay and retrieve a bundle of scavenged mining explosives, unstable as hell, but powerful enough to bring down a small mountain. I strap on a maneuvering jetpack, my pulse pounding like a war drum. Ready for the fireworks show? Astra asks. Let's light this candle, I reply, the desperation fading. This is more than survival now. It's payback. The corvette pulls away, drawing the bulk of the mutants with it. This is my window. I kick the jetpack into gear and shoot toward the cavern entrance, the explosives cradled in my arms. The mutated hordes turn, realizing the trick, chittering with fresh rage. I'm almost there, my heart in my throat. A razor-sharp barb grazes my suit, and I know they're too close for comfort. With a final burst of acceleration, I launch myself into the darkness of the nest and slam the bundle of explosives deep within. I trigger the timer. It's short, far too short. Then I turn and flee, the jetpack straining against the pull of the asteroid's gravity. The nest behind me erupts in a blinding flash, followed by a shockwave that knocks me off course, tumbling me end over end. My ears ring deafeningly as I write myself. Below, the surface of Titan's heart buckles, sending chunks of rock and debris spiralling into the void, then silence. When the dust settles, all that remains of the nest is a gaping, smouldering wound in the asteroid's surface. The Geiger counter is quiet, mercifully silent. Astra's voice finally breaks through the comms. Rigor, you still breathing? Singed but alive, I rasp, heart still thundering. That'll teach him to mess with a rigger. I let out a ragged, victorious laugh. For one exhilarating moment, the fear recedes. We might be small, we might be outmatched, but by God we're striking back. The war has only just begun. We don't linger to celebrate. The asteroid is no safer than it was before, and the odds are stacked against us. That nest was just one of many, and we both know they'll rally, adapt, and strike back. But for now, there's a grim satisfaction in leaving a smoking crater where defiance should have withered. As we pull away, leaving the scarred asteroid behind, Astra breaks the silence. That was a start, but one little battle won't stop them. Her voice is heavy, and I know she's right. So, what's the long game, Astra? I ask, trying to keep the dread from seeping back in. This isn't just about running and gunning, is it? She considers this for a moment. No, she finally admits. There are others like me out here. Scouts, salvage crews, turned resistance fighters. We have eyes on these red zones. They're changing, Rigger, evolving into something bigger. A shiver runs down my spine. The images of the mutated creatures swarm back into my mind. It isn't mindless adaptation anymore. They're building, communicating amassing into something far more insidious. We need intel, Astra continues. Maps, numbers, weaknesses, any data on their activities is critical. Right now they're operating off the grid, 
and that gives us an edge. I sense the shift then. This isn't just about survival anymore. It's about intelligence gathering and sabotage. A new kind of war fought in the shadows. It's a daunting and thrilling prospect all at once. So I'm not just a miner anymore, I say, the realization dawning on me. I'm a spy now. Astra chuckles, a sound rough and genuine. A spy, a saboteur, a pain in their mutated ass. Whatever it takes. Riggers know the belt better than anyone. You have a knack for finding things, digging them up. Use that. A wry smile stretches across my unseen face. Always did have a nose for buried treasure, I admit. So what's our next play? Astra taps the star chart, her finger tracing a route to a red zone several sectors away. There's a dead comms relay. Corporations think it malfunctioned. My bet is the mutants took it out purposefully. If we can get inside, maybe we can tap into their network, learn their secrets. I look at the glowing red blotch on the map, feeling a mix of fear and determination. Sounds like a plan, I say. Only this time, let's bring some bigger explosives. Astra starts plotting our course, the cockpit bathed in a red light. I watch her, realizing I've found something unexpected in the vacuum of space. Purpose. This isn't about riches or survival anymore. It's about standing against something monstrous and insidious, something intent on consuming everything we know. The comms relay looms in the distance, a twisted metal skeleton amidst the silent sea of stars. There's no escaping the fact that this could be our last mission, but something in me, something that has been dormant for too long, sparks into life. This is more than a fight for mere survival. This is a fight for the future. Whatever twisted, mutated form it might take. The comms relay hangs in space like a colossal metal spider, legs twisted, antennae bent. We approach cautiously, Astra piloting the nimble corvette while I man the scanners. The relay might be dead to the corporations, but inside, it could teem with unseen threats. Heat signatures are minimal, I report, voice tight in my helmet. But my guess is, they're not expecting visitors. Ever the optimist, Astra quips, her voice a mix of nerves and anticipation. She brings the ship alongside the wreckage, carefully sinking our orbit with its listless rotation. All right, let's go spelunking. We don magnetic boots and clamp ourselves onto the hull of the corvette, then leap, the low gravity turning the void into a strange, slow-motion battlefield. We drift silently towards a shattered access hatch, cutting torches at the ready. The metal groans as Astra melts a path, the acrid smell of plasma cutting through the recycled air of the suits. With a final hiss, the hatch breaks open, revealing a blackened passageway. Inside, it's a graveyard of electronics. Circuit boards spill like guts, wires hang in tangled webs. It's chaos, but ordered chaos. Looks like they ripped things apart, then put them back together, I murmur. Someone had a purpose here. Keep your eyes peeled for traps, Astra warns. They wouldn't leave this unguarded. We move deeper into the wreckage, our boots crunching on broken glass, beams from our headlamps slashing the gloom. My breath quickens. Every move of shadow sets off alarm bells. And then we find it. The heart of the relay. A central chamber miraculously untouched, humming with an alien energy. Wires snake from the floor, fusing into thick clusters of corrupted tech and organic-looking growths. Mutant biology melded with machine. I've never seen anything like it. This is their command center, Astra whispers, her voice filled with awe and unease. And that, I say, pointing at a mass of crimson tissue woven into the wires, is their brain. Astra nods grimly. Time to get to work. She unstraps a bulky device from her belt, an electromagnetic pulse scrambler. It ain't pretty, but in the right hands, it can fry most electronics back into the Stone Age. We've got minutes, maybe less, before they sense the disruption, she says. She's already working, splicing the scrambler into the mutated network of wires with a terrifyingly steady hand. I focus on the backup roll. My job is to keep watch. 
Scanners sweep the passageways, and my nerves jangle with every imagined sound. Astra moves quickly, sweat beading on her brow. I can tell, even under the visor, she's pushed to the limit. Just as she activates the scrambler, the lights dim and flare. An ear-splitting screech pierces the silence, a chorus of rage and confusion. That's our cue, Astra shouts over the din. They're onto us, let's move! We scramble back through the ruined corridors, the screeching multiplying. Every shadow seems to writhe with malicious intent. Claws pierce the metal walls, sending sparks flying. We're not alone in here anymore. The access hatch looms tantalizingly close. Then, a mutated nightmare bursts from a side vent, bigger than any I've seen, a grotesque fusion of spider limbs and razor teeth. Astra unleashes a blast from her rifle, forcing the creature back, buying us seconds. I'm at the hatch first, cutting furiously. Astra covers my back, firing again and again. Sparks fly as the metal gives way, revealing the cold expanse of space. And salvation. Go! Astra yells, but a stray claw finds purchase on her suit. She stumbles, losing her grip on the edge. I lunge, grabbing her arm, just as the mutated monstrosity drags her back into the darkness. Rigger! Leave me! She screams, blaster still firing into the shadows. Not a chance! I roar back. With a Herculean effort, I heave her towards the hatch, my boots barely hanging onto the hull. Her desperate kick sends the creature tumbling backwards. I seal the hatch with seconds to spare. We lay panting on the hull of the corvette, staring into the abyss as the screeching fades. Adrenaline pumps through me, a mixture of terror and exhilaration. We made it, just. Astra unclips her helmet, sweat plastering her face. Her eyes are still ablaze, but there's a touch of despair in them. Damn it, I lost the scrambler, she rasps. Doesn't matter, I say, a grim satisfaction spreading through me. Data's already uploading, I spliced into their corrupted network. The battle for the relay might be lost, but the data war has just begun. Back on Astra's ship, the adrenaline crash hits hard. I collapse in the pilot's seat, exhaustion washing over me like a tidal wave. Astra's already at the console, fingers flying across the worn controls. Her scarred face is lit by the screens, her eyes narrowed in concentration. What the hell did we get? I finally croak, the words thick in my throat. More than I ever thought possible, Astra breathes. Her voice sends a jolt down my spine. The stolen data flashes across the screen. Star charts, crudely drawn yet detailed, marking swaths of territory we never knew they held. There are communication logs, strings of clicking hisses and guttural squeals. Proof of a communication network far more sophisticated than we imagined. But most chilling of all are the biological readouts. Mutations tracked and catalogued. Deliberate evolution. Weaponization. This isn't some random act of nature, I mutter, the truth sinking in like a rusted blade. This is a war, and they're gearing up for it. They're not just adapting, Astra says, her gaze distant. They're engineering themselves, breeding soldier cast monsters, planning. The word hangs heavy in the cramped space. This wasn't about survival anymore, not for them. They were conquerors, strategists, and out in the belt, we were hopelessly outmatched. A wave of despair threatens to engulf me. We risked everything for a sliver of information, but it changes nothing. What could we, two battered misfits, do against this growing machine of war? Astra! I start, my voice thick with unspoken fears. She turns to look at me. Something like understanding flashes across her exhausted eyes. We send it! she says, a fire rekindling within her. Everything. Blind transmission broadcast to any frequency we can hit. The corporations, independent haulers, anyone who'll listen. And then what? I ask. Hope some white knight rides to our rescue? Astra shakes her head, the spark in her eyes burning brighter. No, this isn't a distress call. It's a wake-up call, a declaration of war. She punches a command, and the transmission starts. Data streams into the void. Maps, mutation logs, comms intercepts, laid bare. 
It's a one-way message, a defiant roar into the darkness. They would know we were here, that we saw them. We were tiny, insignificant, but we would not cower silently. Let the corporations ignore it. Let them brush it aside as some anomaly, Astra says, a predatory grin spreading across her face. But the others like us. The ones who always see what's lurking in the shadows, they'll get the message. The final data packet sends. As the screens fade out, a strange peace washes over me. Despair gives way to a cold clarity. We may not be able to win this war, but we just fired the first true shot. What now? I ask, my voice tight but steady. Astra taps the star charts, plotting a course outside the sprawling red zones. We regroup. Find others. There's a smuggler's haven out on the rim, run by a guy they call the Weaver. Place where outcasts and fighters gather, trade intel, plan. Weaver, huh? I chuckle. Sounds like our kind of company. They'll be expecting us now. This data, she says, then trails off, letting the implications hang in the air. We both know it's not just the mutants who will be hunting us now, but fear takes on a new dimension. Now it's a fuel, burning in tandem with a desperate hope. We were done running, done hiding. This is where the fight starts, and even if we go down, we'll go down swinging. Astra fires up the engines and blasts the little corvette clear of the comms relay. Looking out over the vast, starlit expanse, I realize something has changed irrevocably. There's a path ahead, treacherous and uncertain as hell, but a path nonetheless. For the first time in a long while, I feel not just hope, but the steely grip of purpose. We may not be heroes, but we're not victims anymore. We're the resistance. Ten cycles later, the Weaver's Den is a grimy, glorious pit of a space station, tucked away on the fringes of the known sector maps. It's a maze of rusted gantries, flashy neon signs, and the kind of characters who fade into the shadows when the corporate cops come sniffing around. It's the perfect kind of home for me and Astra. We're not just outlaws anymore, we're veterans, ghosts from the front lines. The data we risked our lives to steal ignited a firestorm. Not open war, not yet, but a ripple of unease spread through the belt. The corporations can't deny what's happening any longer. Independent crews, the rougher sort, started picking sides, joining the fight. Astra and I, we're warlords of a sort, commanding a small but loyal fleet of cobbled-together gunships and scarred crews. The war is far from over. The mutants, the adaptives as some call them now, continue to evolve and spread. Whole sectors are lost, blinking to red on the maps we keep updated with a grim devotion. Each battle is a brutal, desperate thing. Ambushes, raids, hit-and-run strikes to disrupt their supply lines, sabotage their nests. And with each battle, we lose good people, faces that fade from memory too quickly. Tonight, though, is different. The den is almost festive in its grimy way. Whiskey flows, low grade, but that seems fitting. Around me I see the faces of the resistance. Haggard miners, ex-mercs, biohackers and smugglers. Eyes lined with exhaustion but glinting with unbreakable spirit. Astra finds me in the crowd, raising a chipped glass in mock salute. She's different too. Some scars fade. Others just change shape. In the dim light, the burn marks that crisscross her face look like a fierce war paint. News from a contact, she says, a smirk playing on her lips. She lowers her voice. Corporate mining station. They're developing a new weapon, something to target adaptive biology specifically. Still experimental, needs testing. Her grin widens. Their definition of testing involves firing the damn thing in a real combat zone. I raise my own glass. And where? I ask, feeling a thrill despite the exhaustion. Might an intrepid band of freedom fighters come across a testing zone like that? Astra nods, the fire in her eyes dancing in reflection. Close enough to spit, it turns out. Seems the suits don't trust us outlaws to die on our own. 
They want to see exactly how effective this new toy of theirs is. Always so helpful, the corporations, I snort. So, what's the plan? We misunderstand comms, accidentally stumble into the testing zone, give them a damn good show, she says, and her grin is all teeth now. Maybe they give us their fancy weapon. Maybe we melt the damn thing down and sell it off for parts. Either way, chaos ensues. I down the rest of my drink and the familiar rush hits me. We're underdogs, outmatched and always one step ahead of disaster. The odds are stacked against us, the future a question mark scratched onto a dirty bulkhead. But tonight, in this wretched hive of defiance, with Astra at my side and the whispers of a new mission swirling around us, Something feels possible. It's a fragile spark, an ember against the encroaching darkness. But it's a start. The war rages on, and we're right in the thick of it. We'll win some, lose more, make mistakes, damn ourselves, and rise from the ashes to do it all over again. We may not be heroes in any shining armor kind of way, but we're fighting for something, for the right to exist out here, on our own terms even if those terms include radiation burns and laser scars. As we slip away from the den, our battered ships disappearing into the endless black, I catch a last glimpse of a neon sign. I can't quite make out all the words, but a few jump out in the harsh light. Hope, resistance, last stand. It's a fitting epitaph. For the belt, for us. For a war we never asked for, but by God, we'll finish.